step-by-step -step tutorial to help you make your next flower crown. Hello friend, my name is Kathleen and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about all things marketing money and managing your mindset, specifically for floral designers, flower lovers, and farmer florists. And today, back by popular demand, I am gonna go through a step-by-step -step tutorial to show you how to make a dried flower crown. Creating flower crowns using dried ingredients is a lifesaver because no longer do you need to worry about making them the day beforehand. You can actually make them a couple days beforehand, put them on a shelf, keep them away from all the sticky fingers, save yourself so many late nights. But first of all, I wanted to talk you through the three reasons why I love using dried ingredients for this kind of work. And the first one is because we can make things ahead of time. I used to think everything had to be made a certain way and I would always wait till the very last minute to start all of my special wedding and event work. And then I quickly realized that that was very unsustainable and totally not necessary. And in actual fact, for our clientele, and this is probably true around the world with the increased popularity <laughs> dried product that I bet you could suggest to your clients that this is something that they do for their wedding. I promise you, your customers are gonna be way more open-minded than you think they are, but you need to take the lead. You are the one who needs to show them what's possible and you need to steer them in the direction of the kind of work you would like to be creating. The second reason I love using dried ingredients is that it makes everything so light, particularly flower crowns when the girls are walking around wearing them for hours. Y'all remember what it was like? <laughs> Remember how heavy flower crowns can feel? Yeah, yeah. So this can be so delicate, so feminine, and so light, which makes it so much more comfortable. And the third reason I love using dried ingredients is because there's such a delicate nature to dried product. Keep your eyes open when you're at the market, at the wholesaler, and I like to create a little stash of dried ingredients, and you could go totally overboard, so maybe don't do that. But I love buying some product when it's fresh and in season and cheap, and then I'll dry it myself. Hang it upside down, cool, dark place, good air movement, and then you can actually kind of keep replenishing and keep adding to your dried ingredient inventory through the seasons and have such an incredible, delicate texture and touch that you can add to your work. It's like totally addictive. So don't say I didn't warn you but it's super fun. I love, love, love using dried ingredients, but it's so important that we still use the proper mechanics when we're actually making these things because it still needs to look totally magical to our client's point of view. So let's get into the step-by-step -step how to. You are going to need your snips as well as parafilm. And this is that doesn't seem like it's sticky floral tape. Then you will need your wire and the gauge of wire is going to depend on how heavy your actual ingredients are because I'm working with all dried ingredients I'm using a very fine gauge wire, but that's definitely something you can play around with in your practice sessions. Then I also have my ingredients, variety of dried in a few different colors and textures, which I think will look pretty fun when it's all mixed together. And then I have my little portion of ribbon that I'll need at the very end. I also have a pen, which will become obvious when I get into making it. And then I have a few things because I'm going to show you as well how to package the material. So this is a piece of uh, cardboard from the top of a shoebox, brown craft, tape, and a couple of pill pens. Step number one, you are going to make your base for your flower crown and I'm going to make approximately, it's going to go around like half of my client's head. So I'm going to use one of my longer pieces of wire. These pieces of wire come pre-cut. You can actually just measure around your own head with that approach. You are going to want to make sure that your parafilm is warm because that's how it actually becomes much easier to work with. If your hands are wet or the flowers are wet or the wire is wet, this is not going to work. It does take a little practice to get used to. Very first step is parafilm your base wire. So what you're going to do is you're going to also create your little loops for your ribbon. So you're going to take your pen 
and use it to create the diameter for your ribbon holes. And then you're going to hold the two pieces of wire and twist the pen and then pull the loop off the pen. It is definitely easier if you don't have a rubber protector <laughs> on your pen. Doing it on the second side and then just parafilm over that wire because you wanna make sure it doesn't jab into your clients. So that would be the base. Step number two is you're gonna go in and you're going to wire up all of your ingredients. Once you've wired up all of your pieces, you're going to attach your wired pieces to the base. Once you've attached all the pieces to your base, you're going to grab your ribbon, and then all you need to do is loop it through the two holes that you've created. And you can keep the ribbon long, short, you can have as fancy ribbon as you want, you can have twine, whatever suits your design aesthetic, whatever suits what you've promised your client, be sure to trim. I keep packaging super simple, but that does not mean that you have to. This is just what worked for me and I haven't changed it. So it's actually a piece of cardboard and it's a piece of brown craft and I do use a couple pieces of sticky tape. Wrap it like a present. I will just usually package it up, give it a cute little zhuzh. I put two pearl pins in just through the wire and attaching it into the cardboard. Make sure that they don't come out the other side because that is super painful if you catch it in just the wrong place. If you have labels or branding that you use, this is where you get to attach it. This is the final result of what I would deliver to our clients. Would definitely take it off the cardboard and show them how to actually attach it. The hairdresser's there, amazing, if they're doing it themselves, also okay. But just giving them some guidance in terms of where to place it on their head, how to secure it, that it's not the most delicate thing on the planet. But it certainly is pretty. And touching on pricing quickly, the pricing model that I would definitely follow here is the wedding and events pricing model. So take all of your wholesale ingredients, and I mean wires, tape, ribbon, the actual ingredients that you're using. So if you get really fancy with your ingredients, take that into consideration. Packaging as well needs to be considered in your wholesale budget. So the whole thing. Take your wholesale times three and a half to four, depending on how unique or exclusive the product is, and then add on that 50% premium, because this work does take a great deal of expertise and care and know-how to make it look as magical as it does. Definitely have a go, play around with it. I love the idea of using dried ingredients because then from a production point of view, we can make these a few days ahead of time and you're no longer dealing with the late nights the night before the event. Try it out yourself. It's so incredibly fun. And as always, my friends, if you know anybody who could benefit from watching this video, share it with them. Have the most beautiful day and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye for now.